Welcome back to Let's Play Clive Barker's Undying, Burning Dog Bands. We're here in the trashed quarters of Lisbeth Covenant. Looking for clues. Might help us understand this curse better. Great. She's the queen of the Howlers. Told you it was obvious when this thing lit up. Hmm. Not that one. Creepy. Sorry. Didn't mean to get in your way. What the fuck am I doing? I'm all dirty. Oh, that's an ominous noise. Oh, god damn it. Really? Huh. Why was there a health pack in the bathroom? Also, it's literally just a bathroom. There's no... Wait, do they even have indoor plumbing in 1923? I'm a bit rusty on world history, but... World War One was, uh... Only like 10, 15 years earlier. Help me! Ow. Ow! someone I say that. Well, apparently Lizbeth is sending her howler minions to murder all the maids. Ow. Tell you what. Hmm, wasn't as effective as I'd like, but... that bandage. There's one... Oh, hey! Big ugly one. There's one specific thing I remember. Waiting to see that. So since I haven't seen it yet, I must have gone through this part before. But I have no memory of most of this. Uh, Eveline's letter. Dearest Mother, all is not well at the Covenant Estate. Joseph, my husband, who once charmed me with his goodwill and smile, now seems distant and reclusive. I realized that when we met, there are those imperfections one must look past, and that your heart helps you to forgive. However, Joseph's strange obsession keeps him in the library at all hours of the night. 
Seldom are we spending time together, and even more rarely does he want to exercise his husbandly right towards me. I'm beginning to feel inadequate, especially when he talks of his desire for children prancing around the estate. What am I to do? I bide most of my time in the, alone in the greenhouse, reminiscing of my sweet youth and the rich and gallant Peter Roacana, who would wait patiently on me and shower me with expensive gifts like my beloved pearl necklace. Things could have been different had I kept that social path. Instead, I feel like I'm the, f I'm the fool for getting involved with Joseph Covenant. His prime movements, his prime moments are being spent in his library of books twice as old as me. Apparently, my visage can't garner his attention. What dear advice could you give me, dearest mother? I'll be waiting for your response. I hope that this letter finds you and father well. Tell father not to worry about his little robin, that I've left the nest which will never leave his heart. With love, Eveline. Enter gardens through kitchen. <clears throat> oh dear god. So that's the bed where that's the bed where Evelyn died giving birth to Elizabeth. Okay, that startled me. I'm over here, dumbass. Oh shit. Why is that letter here? Surely she sent that letter many, many years ago. Joseph's letter. It is truly a pity that my dear life, uh, my dear wife Eveline, passed away birthing Lizbeth. She would have loved to see them all grow. I cannot help but think that she would have been able to tame this wild streak that they all have exhibited lately. A mother is a soothing influence. I, unfortunately, cannot offer them this solace. I wish I could understand what behavior brought on what. Sorry, I could wish I could understand what brought on this recent behavior. I have received a letter today from Ambrose's boarding school. He has been expelled. I don't know what to do with that boy. With the behavior of the children so appalling, I have no choice but to bring them home. Perhaps I can find a tutor. I hope being under my watchful eye will calm their spirits. Hmm. The last six weeks have been terrible. The tutor was a complete disaster. In fact, the poor man just packed his bags and left in the night. Any form of discipline is hopeless with Ambrose and almost seems completely lost on the others. The only thing I've been able to do is play to their interests. I've noticed that each child has their own avid curiosity. Strange to see it manifest at such an early age, but who am I to discourage the one moment of peace I can find with them? I now understand why the children are behaving wildly. Jeremiah came to me frightened and crying. Several years ago, the children broke into my library and procured one of my research books without my knowledge. How was I to know a twelve-year-old boy would take interest in those dusty tomes? do not know what passage they read, but I suspect it has led to the current predicament concerning their behaviors and eccentricities. Jeremiah says they woke the spirits of the island. Hopefully I can determine what the children have done. Perhaps there is a solution. I have pored over the volumes of research, and I am no closer to understanding what Jeremiah and the children may have conjured. None of the incantations in the books could have caused this to happen. Calling a daemon or consulting spirits should not have such a long-lasting, disturbing effect. I even traveled to the stones. Nothing there gave me clues to what has happened. Perhaps if they had only told me at the time, I would have, ha I would have, ha I would have more insight. Yeah. Now any clues would be long gone. I have determined the stones are some kind of focus. Perhaps there is a reason so many people have been attracted and repulsed by this land. It seems my own fascination of the standing stones has wrought its corruption upon my children, Joseph. That was a bad noise.
If I remember correctly from the diary, Lizbeth was the youngest, but she died first because she had a wasting disease. Well, that is effective at close range. Ah! You got the servant key. I didn't need that for anything. Uh, nothing in there but the servant key. Wait. Jammed. Oh, this is the one. This is what I remember. Uh, this is the Covenant family. Jeremiah, the oldest. Uh, Aaron and Bethany, the twins. Ambrose. I believe he ended up becoming a criminal and, like, hurling himself off a cliff to avoid being arrested or something. Fell in with, some, with a gang of thieves. And, of course, Lizbeth. The inside of the CD case has two versions of this image. One of them looks like this, and it says, Their Family Secrets, dit dit dit. And the other one looks like this, and says, We'll scar you for life. So yeah, the ghost is uh, Aaron. I don't know why sometimes he appears as a ghost, and sometimes he appears as... Well, I don't know why he appears sometimes as himself, and sometimes he appears as a corpse monster. Of course, he's a barbarian, and she's a monster, and I don't even know what's up with Bethany. Man. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. F5. Uh, looks like a door he'll close behind me. Oh shit! Uh. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. Uh, the audio seems to get muffled a little bit when I'm using uh, Scry, but I think that's intentional. Need a key. None of these other ones change. That's the family portrait. Stuck. It's funny, it's still the first session. Oh yeah, it's, uh, this is going up tomorrow, so my calendar, sorry, puts the 24th and the 31st on the same, uh, block. But if I'm reading this correctly, uh, today is United Nations Day and, uh, Labor Day in New Zealand. So I don't know that anyone actually celebrates, uh, United Nations Day. But, uh, if anyone's uh, watching this from New Zealand, happy Damn. Labor Day. Oh. How many of those do I have now? Six. Alright. Well, it'll tell me if I need to, uh, scry, so... Stuck. 
stuck. Doesn't even have a knob. So I find it interesting. This game runs on... what is that? That's a large woman. <laughs> this game runs on the Unreal Tournament engine. Uh, which I find amusing because I'm a nerd. And I am aware that American McGee's Alice ran on a modified version of the Quake 3 Arena engine. And those two games were uh, rivals. But for some reason, these two games, uh, Und Undying and Alice, seem to be tied together somehow. Oh, that's a thing. Jammed. Ah, fuck it. No! To be honest, I was expecting a power up. I already had a uh, attack spell out. Okay. I think that time either. Uh, three. Man, this is not that effective. I remember reading that, uh, Early in development, there was a, a lantern item you could get out. But then they realized, if you can use a lantern whenever you want and light up a whole area, uh, it's not as scary. So they instead added the light amplification thing to scrying and made it much, much weaker than the lantern had been. Is that the door to the gardens? Yes, it is. However, I don't have the key. I lent it to the maid. I believe she is cleaning Air Kaisinger's room today. It's located in the east wing of the house. Thanks. I appreciate your help. Kaisinger? Stuck. That was a name from the, uh... Need a key. Won't bunch. Oh, great. Just tried that. That was the name from uh, that very first journal entry. Garden key. The door to the manor gardens is locked. The cook says the maid is the only one with the key, and she is cleaning Kysinger's room in the east wing. Kysinger. Well that, well, that name might not ring true for the servant. I'm deeply disturbed that Otto Kysinger would even be here. What the hell does that bastard want with my friend and his family? I can only be sure that when our paths cross, he will get more than a stern word from me. I only wonder how he plans to answer my questions when my hands are gripped tightly around his throat. Otto has done more to damage my reputation than I care to remember. I have no doubts that should he find out I've made it, uh, I've made it out to the Covenant Estate, he'll stop at nothing to foil my attempts at uncovering the mysteries that seem to be plaguing this family and my dear friend. Getting a uh, lozenge out. Mm. Don't waste a precious minute. Okay. Get key from maid in Otto Kaisinger's room. I'm just waiting for these knives to like, start flying around or something. Jammed. I think the east wing was upstairs. Oh shit. That went poorly. Lizzie! That's where I came from, right? Jammed. I regret this. Oh, 
Oh, hey, Aaron. What you doing? Oh, he just doesn't care. He wasn't moving as I, as I shot him. Actually, that was one of the dumber things I've tried now that I think about it. He's a fucking ghost. Where is it? I know it is around here someplace. No, he doesn't care about that either. Ah, here it is. I'm gonna throw out a way, uh, wild guess here and say that's Eveline. She has a dead motherly look about her. Oh. He's gone. Physics! I don't think that's how that works. Moon door notes. Reddish leaves swirl in the wind like lost souls in search of rest. Like an open sketchbook focused on my dreams, this land is forever pictured as a comforting autumn dusk. Oh, yeah, that was a thing. Uh, Bethany uh, was an artist. There was something about how she was raving about a series of paintings she was doing that she called... It was autumn something. I, I lost the, the, the diary book years ago, but I must have poured over it a hundred times because I was too afraid to actually play the game. Um, replete with a golden sky, with crackling river water and bubbling marshes that dot the land, it feels like a romantic artist's canvas. Wait, what? Upon further investigations, I have sensed horrendous visions of gnarled doom decorated as a picturesque facade in this endless autumn dusk. Spiny trees root deep into the foul earth, licking the ground dry of all that is good. I didn't understand that at all. Carcasses populate the brush, their putrid remains swallowed whole by the land and corners of this malevolent area are teeming with vicious, ungodly prey. Whilst all whilst the grass stretches over this land, twisting together like veins of pulsating sinew, as if the ground were alive, keen to the inhabitants that parade on its back. Beady, black, soulless eyes flash across the air. Tiny, quick-winged bats streak through the bright sky, flying razors waiting for the perfect moment to descend. As they swoop by, I see sharp, bloodied teeth, a wicked, demonic smile. From the darting blurs, I hear an ominous whistling that cheers, uh, chills my soul. They own the skies here. Wraith-like, hooded minions, overseers without heart or soul, patrol this land. Slash and stitch techniques permeate their faces and arms, patched together like cheap quilts, using the skin from the bodies of rank corpses. They gather and live like packs of rabid wolves, investigating, uh, instigating fights for supremacy. These abominations thirst for my destruction. They are mostly clustered around footpaths that seem to traverse upward along a cliff side. But alternate groupings are planted along, among water, uh, watering holes in the hollowed trees. Further down the path, it is as if the shadows are swallowing the surroundings whole, without penchant of logic or drop of meaning. It is as if the only reason for this actually lies in the darkness itself. Like royalty that rules the black void, entombed in the night infinite. It is she, the eternal mistress of shadows. Aaron. Man, what? Well. Well, that, um, enlightening text read, I'm gonna call it, I'm Burning Dogface, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Clive Barker's Undying. When I try to 
find my way back to that door that led to the east wing and investigate Otto Keisinger's room. Later!